Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the Diggers and Dealers Mining Forum 2021. My name is Marcus Freeman, Chief Executive of Canaccord Genuity Australia, and it's my pleasure to be chairing the opening session of the conference here in its 30th year. At the outset, I'd like to acknowledge the conference organisers. As we all know in the room, the last 18 months hasn't been an easy one in the conference business. To Miles, to Sharon, to Suzanne, Jim, and the rest of the team, congratulations for pulling everything together. For navigating the forever changing border restrictions, this year arguably more hard and more difficult than even last year. Ladies and gentlemen, at last count, we're at 2,400 delegates here in Kalgoorlie, equal third highest on record. Wonderful achievement. Clearly, there's been large numbers of cancellations from the East Coast in the last few weeks, and, but really pleasingly to see replaced by lots of great local WA support, which is a credit to the team and a testament of the popularity of the forum. Well done, team. I'd now like to welcome Gavin Everett to the stage for the housekeeping. Good morning. My name's Gavin Everett. I'm the logistics coordinator of the annual Diggers and Dealers Mining Forum. I'm also a Calgary local and very proud to call this great city home. I'm here to run through some necessary housekeeping items for the next three days. With regards to COVID-19 and phase five, please maintain safe physical distancing over the next three days and good hygiene. Hand sanitizers are placed around the venue for your use. Your delicate bags provide personal hand sanitizer as well as an optional mask. The venue is set up with one entry and a separate exit. Everyone needs to access the entry to the venue and go through a thermal camera temperature check. The forecourt and the forecourt marquee are again licensed for Monday, Tuesday evening functions. Ablutions. Refer to the map. There are signed external ablutions located on the left of the exit out of the large marquee. There are also ablutions located both ends of the art centre. We have full-time cleaning crew on site to maintain health hygiene standards over the next three days. Car parking. Please note, no parking in the area indicated on the screen. The side street is one way past the venue to allow forums, buses, local taxis to access the venue. Safety and muster points and fire extinguishers. There are three emergency muster points indicated in the red. The various red arrows indicate the building exit points. There are fire extinguishers located around the venues. First aid kits. First aid kits are available in both marquees and a defibrillator immediately opposite the forum office of the entry to the main marquee. We have a GP contact for anyone requiring any medical assistance. And please, wear your delegate badge at all times. If there's anything you need over the next three days, please don't hesitate and ask any of the forum staff. We are here to make your experience an enjoyable one. Thank you. Thanks, Gavin. I'd now like to ask everyone to be upstanding for the national anthem. Smile. 
We are honoured to have with us today a highly respected Wongatha man, Councillor Lyndon Brownlee, to present the welcome to country. The Wongatha people share a strong connection to Kalgoorlie and the surrounding community. Apart from Lyndon's work as a councillor with the Kalgoorlie Boulder City Council, Lyndon heads up a very successful family business, Pushgudu Wongatha Tours, and they are passionate about their country and culture. The tours they operate give them an opportunity to share their knowledge of this special region, giving visitors a glimpse in both modern, the modern and ancient history of Kalgoorlie through a range of tours, and it helps keep their cult culture alive. As a result of his extensive work with youth, and at the young age of 23, Lyndon was invited by George W. Bush to give a lecture at Georgetown University, and was given a personal invitation to attend Barack Obama's inauguration in 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lyndon Brownlee. Good morning, everybody. I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, thank Marcus and uh, also Miles and Sharon and uh, Jim uh, for having me here this morning with you all. And I really do count it a privilege and an honour to be able to be a part of this process of welcoming you, welcoming you here to, to country. And for those of you who may not really understand the process of it, I believe it's really important that you do. And if you'd allow me just a, a, a minute or two, just to be able to explain the significance of a welcome to country, because it's no good you sitting down there, just uh, us going through the motions and uh, me coming up here and just uh, welcome to Wanga the country, enjoy your time, have a good day. No, there's more to it. And it's actually a very traditional custom that has been modified into a more formal process. But it's the essence of a welcome to country, which is so important. You see, a welcome to country, what it does is that it facilitates a coming together. When Aboriginal nations, when they would pass across borders, natural borders, natural boundaries, we didn't have hard borders or boundaries like fences or walls or anything like that, but probably, probably a hill, probably a lake or a river they would meet there, particularly here in the desert area, where we are now, going into, going into the Great Victorian and the Gibson Desert areas, we would light a fire. And the, and the host tribe would see this fire, and what they would do is that they would look at the makeup of the group. Once they determined it was safe enough to be able to engage with them, the men would come together and they would talk with each other. And then a very important process would take place. People would be, would be placed into what we call our skin sections. Well, that's what anthropologists call them, but uh, we call it the Galara. And here we have six. We've got Garimara, Yebarga, Melanga, Banaga, Tairoro, and Burongo. Please repeat that for me now. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, these relationship groups, this old relationship kin uh, uh, system, kinship system, allowed us to be able to connect with people. What it did is it allowed us to be able to connect with you, to initiate communicating with you, and more importantly, to build a relationship. This is kind of the reason why Aboriginal people, if you may have grown up with them or gone to school with them, you may have had a friend or, a, or a, uh, work, a work colleague who may have said, oh, that's my uncle, that's my auntie. 
You might have been scratching your head and wondering how they related to all these people. It's basically this, this ancient kinship system that we have deeply ingrained within us to be able to connect with people, to build relationships, and that is so important for us here at this forum. And it is the essence of that that I hope to bring here today, a space to help, to help begin the day off with this ancient custom modified for us in this day and age to be able to initiate communication with each other and to build better relationships. You see, Kalgoorlie has been named after the gargula, the silky pear, which grows right throughout this place. The silky pear, it needs a host to help it grow. It does not kill the host. It may use a bush, it may use a tree. But it uses its host to support its growth. And in time, once the gargula matures, it bursts open. We'll soon see this happening in the next month, in September. It will burst open, full of life, and what it does is that the seeds will go out. They will be blown out across the country. The gargula self-propagates. But the lesson in this is that it's important that we support each other, that we look to those who are supporting us to help us with our growth so that in time we too can be able to share what we have learnt, what we know in the years and the times ahead of us. We are, we are living in, in very unpredictable times. And I suppose that really puts a lot into perspective, especially life. And I think one of the things that is most important in this day and age is family. Family, friends, relationships. Sometimes we can be overwhelmed with everything else. However, it's important, just like that gargula who needs growth, who, who needs support, and in turn, in time, it will then share of itself. We too need to be mindful that during this time, during this period of significant growth, we live in one of the best states in the country, I believe, and I'd like to acknowledge one of our past premiers who are here with us today. But we live in one of the best nations. And while we support each other, and while we are working within this space, however, let us not lose, lose sight of our humanity. I'm glad that you've come here to Wangara country. I think one of the things that I've been blessed with is being able to communicate effectively, not only in English, but also in my language. I still speak it fluently. Your old people came to Australia a very long time ago. Our old people were here together and we've grown up in this nation together. However, it is up to us to be able to join together in these times to be able to create, create and to be able to continue to build a better place for our people to live in. Bless you all. God bless you all. I hope that your conversations are fruitful. I wish you all the best in your endeavours. I really do. We live in this country together. This is our land. White fellows, black fellows, all here together. Let us build this strong nation together. Thank you for having me. Bless you. Have a wonderful three days. Thank you, Lyndon. Thank you, Lyndon. I'd now like to invite the Diggers and Dealers Chairman, Jim Walker, to formally open the forum for 2021.
Thank you, Lyndon, for welcoming us to Wangata Country, and thanks again for your service to the local community. Lyndon's had to go off early today. Welcome and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to Kalgoorlie Boulder and the 30th Annual Diggers and Dealers Mining Forum. Sadly, due to border closures and travel restrictions, our international delegates and most of our interstate delegates are unable to join us again this year. We're hopeful that the entire Diggers and Dealers team will be back together again ne next year. This will be cause for a great celebration. For those unable to be here, we are live streaming all presentations. We introduced this initiative last year and we're thrilled that the presentations were viewed by 3,500 users in 47 different countries. The Diggers and Dealers News Bureau also returns this year, staffed by highly experienced resources journalist, John Ferry. We are incredibly proud to be back in Kalgoorlie, celebrating the 30th anniversary of Diggers and Dealers. Within a 50 kilometre radius of this stage, the entire life cycle of mining and exploration companies is playing out. From grassroots exploration to mineral production, every occupation represented in this room is playing a role. Right across Australia, in regional towns just like Kalgoorlie, the mining industry is thriving and powering our economy. I look forward to diggers every year when I can reconnect with the people, places and the happy memories of my formative years in the mining industry, which all occurred in towns just like this. Over the next three days, let us all celebrate Kalgoorlie Boulder and the mining industry. to be at this forum. I've heard about it, I've not been here before, although I've been to Kalgoorlie on a number of occasions. I remember I was back in this uh, wonderful town of Cal. This is a town where you feel you can, anything is possible. The sky's the limit as long as you work hard and treat people well. I don't need to remind an audience such as this of how much we are in debt to the mining industry for the salvation of the economy of this country after the global financial crisis. The uh, establishment and growth of the Australian nation is inseparable from that of the Australian minerals industry, which is above all the story of people to the industry. Thank you. Along with Sir Avi Provo, who provided a toast to the industry in 2002, another great supporter of Diggers and Dealers was Dr. Roy Woodall, who had attended every event since its inception. Sadly, Roy passed in February of this year, and industry farewelled one of its greatest icons. Until travel restrictions curtailed her plans, Roy's wife, Roy's wife Barbara had planned to attend the forum this year to commemorate Roy's life and his enormous contribution to the mining industry. I look forward to seeing Barbara back here again next year. I'm fortunate enough to have had a rewarding career in the mining industry that has allowed me to meet some incredible people, travel the world, and I'm a strong advocate for the mining sector and have encouraged my children and my grandchildren to consider a career in the industry. 
Encouraging the next generation to pursue a career in the mining industry is becoming a lot easier as the community is beginning to recognise our contribution. This is not purely on our huge economic contribution, but also through the understanding that we produce all the minerals required for future growth in renewable energy, battery storage and electric vehicle manufacturing. Along with our encouragement and the growing appeal of working in the resources sector, education pathways are being established for school students. The Core Learning Foundation is an organisation doing great things. It provides primary and secondary school students with a resource-focused program based on STEM. The core learning model is grounded in the, in the provision of relevant purposeful education pathways to serve meaningful careers in our burgeoning resources industry. There are many advocates for this core learning model who are supporting the initiative of getting our youth ready for careers in the resources industry. If you'd like more information on how to support this education initiative, please have a chat with supporters like Mike Zepner, Raleigh Finlayson or Peter Bradford over the next three days. It is now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Ian Golden. Ian Golden is Professor of Globalisation and Development at the University of Oxford and Founding Director of Oxford University's interdisciplinary Oxford Martin School. From 2001 to 2006, Ian was Vice President of the World Bank and the Group's Director of Policy and Special Representative to the United Nations. From 1996 to 2001, Ian was Economic Advisor to President Nelson Mandela and the Chief Executive of the Development Bank of Southern Africa. In 2014, Professor Golden famously predicted that a global pandemic would be the most likely cause of the next financial crisis. Please join me in welcoming Professor Ian Golden. <laughs> 